First of all, there's some key words on the board here. On your tables, just have a quick discussion about those words. Discussing key terms from the language of kinematics is how students began this session. Devised to deepen their understanding of how the kinematics of a particle are represented by the graphs of displacement, velocity and acceleration against time, this discussion was an opportunity for teachers and students to revisit and review their understanding at the beginning of the session. Displacement, velocity. I started the lesson just with the key words and asking the students what they understood about those because all of those words are things that they should have met previously um, at GCSE, in maths and in physics as well. Distance, well that's like sort the total of distance you travelled of displacements, how far you've come from, from the starting start point. point. Yeah. Acceleration. Rate of change of velocity. Any thoughts on any of these? We were thinking that well, some of them were vector quantities and some of them were scalar quantities. Okay, so which ones are vector and which ones are scalar? I wasn't sure actually whether the students would immediately tell me which were vector and scalars, but actually that's how they decided to split the words up into those immediately, which was helpful for the lesson. For one of the scalars you could have average speed. Was there anything else that was scalar on there? Distance is scalar and distance travelled. You have got a grid and you have got some graphs. And now, an activity to extend and deepen their understanding of how graphs, based on these parameters, represent the kinematics of a particle. The students had 12 graphs and there were no labels in any of the axes. What their task was was to match those graphs up into four groups of three a displacement time, a velocity time and an acceleration time that all went together, that were all for the same motion. And they had to work out how they could match up. There were a few times when two of the graphs could go in a particular place, but then the third one wouldn't work. So the students had to find a solution that would work for all 12 graphs. And the velocity ones have to start from zero anyway, from the origin. So it's going to be constant, yeah? yeah. So we can narrow it down. So if they start from the origin, they have to start at zero, don't they? Yeah, but that one doesn't start from the origin. That one's got a positive gradient, and that one's got a negative gradient at the start. Hmm. So that's that negative, because it's They've both got positive, but because this one's less steep, and this is more like of a gradual curve, I think. Maybe that way around? Yeah. So it's really important when you're going round, before I ask the questions to the students, I've got to be listening to what they're saying because if I'm not listening to what they're saying, I'm not, I'm not sure what my questions are going to be to the students yet. So it's through what they're saying that then leads to the questions that I'm going to ask them. So what's happening to the velocity up here? Is it decreasing? Okay, good. Why is it decreasing? Um, I'm not really sure. Um, because what is it about the graph that makes you think that it's decreasing? Because the gradients getting less steep. Okay. <laughs> so through asking those questions to the students and their explanations, I can then assess whether they are understanding what's happening or not. So looking at on a displacement time graph, if we've got um, a maximum point that the students understand that that means that the velocity at that instant is zero. And then we're talking about the gradient either side of that maximum point as well. Do the students understand what's then happening with the velocity either side? So the velocity, velocity at this point is zero, is negative. Yeah, which is, is going bit. down. And this starts negative. And then it, at the turning point, it hits turning zero. Point. I check that they're using the correct vocabulary, whether they're using displacement or distance, whether they're using velocity and speed. Are they talking about the gradient of the graph? Are they talking about direction? OK, right, so that's our first group. Guys, explain why. Well, we thought the top one, we kind of just thought if it was a displacement, what would the velocity graph look like? Okay. And we decided that it would be a negative velocity hit zero because it has a, st a turning point and then go positive, okay. which the graph um, we chose for velocity does. And then if that was the velocity, the acceleration would just be a constant um, increasing. Have a read of these. What's wrong with them? Discuss it with the person next to you for a minute or so and then we'll discuss them together. If the time graph is horizontal, then the particle's not moving. Well, that means got it's moving, speed. but it's just got not, not accelerating. Yeah. If the acceleration is negative, then the particle must be moving backwards. No, it's deceleration. Yeah. Which it could be still moving in any straight It could be any direction. Yeah. But it's deceleration. Just slowing down. Just yeah. slowing down. So the speed is the gradient of a displacement time graph. So it should be velocity, not speed. 
Okay, good. Why? Why has it got to be my velocity? My speed is scalar, velocity is vector. If the acceleration is negative, then the particle must be moving backwards. Could it be decelerating? Yeah, because if you take, just an example, if you throw a ball up in the air, yeah. gravity is pulling it down, so it has a negative acceleration. Good. But it's obviously moving up, and then when it reaches its peak, it starts falling, so it's got its negative acceleration, and is its velocity, the magnitude of its velocity is increasing. I think there weren't any huge misconceptions in the work that the students were doing, actually. They grasped it really well. They were, I think, together in their groups, and any misconceptions um, were kind of being cleared up through their own discussions as they went through, mm. and by design of the task. Um, it was really nice, you know, looking at all three of those graphs in one, rather than looking at them in isolation. Mm. It was a really nice activity for that.